Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Monday, November 21st, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, you know, there's been a huge delayed, refect, delayed effect that's occurred from the Fed's tightening program that they've had ongoing. And should have, we all should have saw this coming a little bit better, myself included. The fact that it takes at least six months out before a liquidity crunch starts to actually manifest itself from the Fed's tightening schedule. So what they were doing months ago, the Fed is not going to, it's a delay. It's not going to really have its punch until we get further ahead in the future. And so we're seeing like what they were doing before they, you know, I mean, this is why the stock market is still rebounding and everything. And this is, but the liquidity, the money is drying up from the system because the money is created from debt. Debt is money. Credit is created from debt. And so the money you're carrying around in your pocket right now, the dollar bills, if you're in the United States, if you're in the United Kingdom, the pounds you've got in your pocket right now. If you're in Canada, Canadian dollar. If you're in Japan, it's again. Those that currency is created from loans that were made. When the interest rates go too high, these loans are not made any longer, and they recall old loans. They're like, pay us back, and the people are like, well, they start to get insolvent, and they can't buy anything out there so more and more companies are not selling things and the whole thing starts to implode on itself this whole mountain of debt starts to implode on itself and this is what started to happen in 2008 we are so deep into this thing we're getting so close to a liquidity crisis of unprecedented much more powerful than happened in 2008 we're getting so close to, to that turnover point where there's a crunch, and this is what we saw with the Bank of England not long ago, when they had a problem in their system that they had to correct. Let's just call it a problem. I think it was in the retirement accounts and stuff, you know, the, the savings accounts and stuff, the, the long, long-term long stuff. You know, they, they, it just, it happens suddenly when it happens. It comes, just boom, hits in the system. And we're right on the edge of it right now, on the, on the cusp of some sort of a massive liquidity crisis where nobody has any money because the Fed has been actually sucking it all out like a hoover, you know, on one side, the liquidity. And on the other side, we haven't seen it all completely dry out yet, but it's just going to dry out suddenly. Boom. What the Fed's, the actions the Fed's been taking. So let's get in there and take a look at the markets. But listen, guys, you got to be an expectation of this, the sudden turn down, and we're seeing a signal in cryptocurrencies first because this is one of the most speculative asset classes. So we're seeing the signal. It's like the canary in the coal mine. Uh, also, oil prices are starting to tumble today. We're going to take a look at that. Let's get the markets open. Let's start the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. Uh, we're seeing silver dipsy doodling a little bit. Uh, it was going up earlier. Now it's going down a little bit. It's down 21 cents on the day at 2073. This no way reflects price on the actual physical metal any longer. This is a paper derivatives price set by the COMEX. 2073 is that set price by the COMEX. It, do, it does actually have a little reflection uh, on the physical price, a little bit. And the fact that when this goes down sharply, you see it reflected somewhat on the price when you figure in the premiums on the actual physical metal. But it's getting less and less the effect it's having because if this moves down too sharply, they just raise the premiums higher. And as they do that, they're like dialing it in so that silver's not gonna be, silver's gonna be somewhat sheltered from this storm, this liquidity crunch storm. But what about the speculative assets? I don't consider silver a speculative asset. Uh, gold or silver, uh, they're real money. Here, look look what we have right now. 1737 for gold's down $13.40. 
But like I say, what about the speculative assets? Well, here's one of your most speculative asset classes, is cryptocurrencies. And we saw a big drop. It's 803 billions today. Look at this Bitcoin price. It's getting ready to drop down into the 15s. 16,150 and dropping. Ethereum, 1134. Uh, so we're seeing big problems in the crypto market. Dow Jones Industrial Average today. And we're seeing only, a, only an 11 point drop. I'm starting to think, yeah, I, I was questioning it. This went so high that I was questioning, look at the peaks in the market, you know, 36,000. And look how high this went, 33,000, almost 34,000. I was questioning whether, I mean, you know, they say, hey, you know, we're in a bear market rally, but I mean, if it goes up higher than the previous highs, I mean, you can't, you have to question, is, it, is this a bear market rally? But yeah, it is, I believe it is. It's just one heck of a rally this has been, so. I'm going to tell you guys, this would be a, well, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't tell you guys. I'm sorry, I can't tell you guys. But, uh, if I, I just say what I would do, is I, I would sell that rally. <laughs> That's one hell of a rally right there. <laughs> I'll tell you guys what. Okay. Uh, crude oil. 76.04 today is down four dollars and four cents. Now this is another indicator, guys, that there's trouble times ahead, and it's gonna the liquidity's draining out, and right now we're gonna see who has got a swimsuit on. It's like the water draining away, and the liquidity's the the, the debt from the system, or the money, or the cash, the the. The, the debt is the money. The money you got in your pocket right now, those dollar bills, are all they're all somebody else's debt. And so when the debts are paid off, they just poof, vanish. All the money vanishes from the system. Like, poof, dries up. So then we see who is able to stay solvent or who's able to ha who has a swimsuit on when the tide goes out. And that's what's going to happen right here. And we see this crude oil price falling $4 today, over 5% in one day. Yeah, I know uh, maybe they increase production or whatever, but normally, they, if they increase oil production and stuff, it might drop a buck. Why is it dropping four bucks? It's dropping four bucks because there's a hint at the underlying market that liquidity is drying up in the system. People are not going to have as much spend to spend at their discretion, discretionary spending. The consumer is going to be tapped out very soon. We're going to see a big drop in the economy caused by what the Fed did all these months and what they're continuing to do. And they're not going to pivot. The Fed's not going to pivot until we get this big drop. Then they're going to come along and pivot in the system. But it ain't going to work right away. And so they're going to have to do more. And they're going to have to do a tremendous amount to stop what they've created. They, they've got momentum in the system now. Tremendous momentum. And I talked about this back a couple of years ago when I first predicted all this, what's going on right now with the Fed coming in there and doing their quantitative tightening, I said if they go too deep with this, if they continue with this too far with this tightening business and, and raising interest rates, that what they'll do is they'll create an opposite effect toward deflation that'll be very hard to stop and it'll cost them a lot because they have to stop it. They'll have to stop this momentum, and it's going to mean that they're going to have to... And this is perfect for their opening of the new CBDC. This fits in, see? Because this gives them the, the reason. Everything in life is, is cause and effect. And the, if, the, if the Fed is going to produce a central bank digital currency and just pump into these new systems like un, UBI and stuff... They have to have a need for that. They have to have the people crying for it. Please give us some money. We can't feed our children. And upset and, and cars burning in the street because the people are so upset. And then they'll say, oh, we are the beneficent ones. We're going to give you everything you need. We're here. It's a new UBI program. We're going to send everybody in America $2,000 a month. And, uh, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, we get this big sugar rush again from all this money hitting the system. Just like we had with the stimmy checks. They're just playing this game over and over again. The ultimate end goal, never forget the end goal, 
is to send the people who have savings out there, the working class people, into a state of utter poverty where they're going to take the hit. And the people who out there who are like the people who are like, I don't know, derelict people who don't have a job or whatever, they're going to be supported. Whereas the people who are working class people, they're going to be so deep in debt for, for everything else, including taxes, that they're going to have to rely upon the system at some point. And the system then is going to have the CBDC currency out there that they have total control over you. Total control. They know everything you're spending. If you want to buy a piece of bubble gum, they'll know it. And here it comes, boys. This total dystopian type 1984 type society. Brave new world, whatever you want to call it. Here it comes. Add to the mix a few new variants of whatever, you know, and you've got a medical establishment that has total control as well. So you're not going to go anywhere or be able to do anything unless you've got some sort of a, a, a card that's in, it, that controls your money and controls all of your medical information and everything else. And, and you're not going to be able to get in any doors. They, they can make it so all the doors and, and, and all the buildings that you want to enter. And I'm not talking about just grocery stores, everything. Even your little corner supermarket, for crying out loud, can have a door on there where you got to be scanned before you go in there. You're not going to get in. So they'll be able to isolate people in society that don't have what they need to pass. And it's just going to be a little barcode. I mean, so it's not like you're going to have to carry, like... Back in World War II, like in Germany and stuff, they had to carry a lot of papers. and They'd be standing there, you know, with, uh, with, with armaments that could, I mean, totally armed to the hilt, right up to the chin, you know. And they'd say, papers, please. And they'd have to go through and it'd be all these different papers, dozens of papers you'd have to show them. Now it's just going to be scanning a barcode. You are going to be a barcode. And they'll know everything. You're not going to have to carry them, all those papers with you. It's just going to be one little barcode. They'll, they'll, what they're going to do is they're going to mesh it all together. The medical system, the money system, the financial system. Everything's going to be meshed together to make you into one little barcode. Simplified. And that barcode's going to tell them if you've had uh, all of your... Uh, all, all your medicines, it's going to tell them their medical history, it's going to tell them everything about you, right down to, uh, you name it, what kind of, a, you're going to have a score, like, and then they're going to, first off, they're just going to know that score, if you you got a low score, you're just going to be a person that's on the fringes of society, and if your score goes too low, I mean, <laughs> you're going to be in big trouble because your money ain't going to work. Sorry. Okay, got on that tear, I don't know. Uh, 129.33 on, uh, on the volatility estimate. This is a, uh, the move index. Uh, we're seeing it stay low on the move index. This is because it's only showing stability because there's so much support for the dollar because of what the Fed's doing, and the liquidity crunch hasn't really started yet. And this thing is going to explode to the upside once it reflects what's going to happen very soon. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Here, Here's the U.S. Treasury market. And we're seeing the uh, U.S. 7-year uh, and 10-year. 10-year uh, at 3.8 and the U.S. 7-year is at 3.9. There's an inversion. Okay, so U.S. 20-year is at 4.1 and the U.S. 30-year is at 3.89. There's an inversion. Uh, there's inversions all the way down. I mean, we can look at a three-month treasury here, and it's yielding more than a U.S. 10-year treasury. It's yielding more than a U.S. 30-year treasury. This is the highest rates of inversion I've ever seen in the, in the bond yields. The bond yields is not just inverted. It's telling us, it's screaming at us that something really big is coming here. And we all know what it is. If you don't know what it is, it is a money drying up in the system. Not just drying up, disappearing. Poof. Credit gone. 
And how and how do you get it back? Well, the only ones that can get it back is the ones who create the the currency itself. And they're going to have to do it. But it's not going to work right away, so they're going to have to do it even deeper and bigger. Bigger and bigger than we've ever seen before. This is what's going to trigger the hyperinflation. Because they're going to get they're going to get in so deep, they're going to have to do so much stimulus that ultimately that stimulus is going to cause a hyperinflation. This last stimulus that we had at the start of COVID caused inflation. This next stimulus is going to have to be so big to keep the economy alive that it's going to cause hyperinflation. It's all she wrote, guys. 107.72. That, that's if we can escape the world blowing up because all these guys out there are creating more and more weapons of mass destruction and they got their finger on the red button. We got to escape that. And that's a show I did yesterday. If you haven't seen that show, go back and watch it yesterday. I did about what they're doing over North Korea, about what they're doing in Russia, about what they're doing in all well, the weapons they got out there. Just one of those hemp weapons. And I'm not talking about stuff that grows in the field. I'm talking about hemp, these high-altitude electromagnetic pulse weapons that are specifically designed. They use the power of a nuclear weapon to create a tremendous electromagnetic pulse that can go out like a thousand miles away and knock out all electronics. They don't need all this. They only need to get one of those through. I'm going to tell you something. I think it was like... I think six years ago, something like that, right around that time. Don't hold me to that. But North Korea launched a uh, enormous rocket, and they had a little satellite beeping right over the top of our heads, right over across the United States of America. Beep, 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 beep. There goes the satellite, and nobody knows even to this day what's inside that thing. I think it, I think it weighs like a ton or something, and it goes beep, beep, beep. The satellites, they, they've got the technology. Well, if North Korea's got that technology, can you imagine what Russia has? And China? And the United States, if you think Russia and China's got that, the United States is by far the biggest military in the world. They've got ten times more. They can blow the Earth up, well, or, or completely obliterate our electronics on Earth to the point where we're going to have to be in the Stone Age. Ain't nothing going to work. Not your computer, laptop, nothing. It's all going to be bricks. They're, they're going to be no, work no more better than the stones that are in your yard. The electronics, they'll be fried in your car too. Did you know that your car has a computer inside it and it won't run? You have to be careful when you want to take your car to, to be fixed. Because if you decide you need some welding done underneath your car and stuff, they have to know how to do that properly as so as to not burn your computer out. You just can't weld on your cars anymore. You want to put a trailer hitch on your car and you say, Oh, I want to weld that spot underneath the frame there. You better watch out. You better disconnect certain things that need to be disconnected from your computer, your car's computer, or you're going to fry your computer and you're going to have to pay an awful lot of money to get it fixed. And I don't even think that might not even come under warranty because it's your fault. So think twice before you do any welding on your car. Especially uh, uh, arc welding. Okay, so listen. Thank you guys for watching my show. I know this is getting to be a really tough world. You, you know, they promised us back in the 1950s. They showed us these pictures that artist conceptions of the future and we'd have flying cars and everything else and life would be so simple because we would just have to push a button for everything it seems like the more complex our technology gets the more complicated our lives get and in the end it's just a total nightmare where we used to have free time and we used to have enjoyment was back when we used to have plows and i mean plows i mean a horse and plow and a horse and buggy and all that they used to have free time to go into the, and that's where the movies started, you know, back in those days. They had the movie theaters where the old, where the person in the corner used to play the piano while they would have a black and white thing on the screen. And for them, it was very entertaining because they were always on the farm all the time, you know, 
plowing the fields and stuff, and then they might get a Saturday off, you know, and they might have a date with their girlfriend, go into town, and go to a movie, a, an old what they called a a a, a, a a still picture movie. It's just like pictures on the, you know, in the movie theater stuff. It was like, that was a big thing. In fact, they used to actually enjoy standing in line, seeing other people, you know, while they're standing in line waiting to go into the movie. Nowadays, what about what us when we have to stand in line? Because we're standing in line all the time now. It's not a novelty anymore. It's like punishment. You're standing there in line shuffling from one foot to the other trying to wait while you get this big long line ahead of you. It's like punishment. Back in those days, it was a novelty. They used to only get to go to town maybe once every so often. Maybe they were standing in line at the movie theater and they got to see all the other people and how they were dressed and stuff, and it was just like great fun. Our world is turning to crap. <laughs> right in front of our eyes. It is being run by criminal cartel syndicates all around the world in every country. You know? And so, I mean, and they're turning it to crap and with the technological advancements, too. And soon, I pity what's going to happen like 20 years down the line when AI comes on board and we get to the point where it's running the show. It's just a matter, a matter of you don't know. The unknown is very frightening. My personal opinion is I think that the AI possibly... Give it a chance. It can't be any worse than the criminal cartel they got in there right now. <laughs> I mean, maybe it'll be a whole lot better. At the very worst, I mean, you know, they've predicted AI would just turn on us and become like something out of a Terminator movie, which I did a couple shows ago about AI and how it's coming in. It's going to be possibly, we just, we just don't know. But I say give it a chance because it, I don't think it can't be any worse than what they got right now. And it might be really, really good. I don't know. I mean, it might uh, be able to uh, organize us so that we're very productive once again. In fact, when we come into a computerized society like we're coming into now, maybe we lose all of our productivity and maybe we don't gain it back until we become organized. Maybe it causes, at first, maybe it causes tremendous disruption. Maybe we might go through a period where maybe we'll blow ourselves up to pieces as a species because we're so disorganized as the computer technology is first coming in. Maybe that's a danger period. Maybe that's where we're at right now. We're right on the edge of nuclear annihilation. And then we move to, past that point. We start to become a very computer high-tech society. And... Of course, uh, we need structure at that point. So maybe uh, computer AI or computer uh, computer generated consciousness perhaps will give humanity that structure to get past that hurdle and move on to advancements where we get to a point where we are able to move to the stars. Now I'm just thinking ahead. I'm just saying what if. But maybe right now we're in that period where we're totally screwed. And we have to get through that period before we can get... And maybe we're right on the edge of being able to get through that period or not get through that period, depending on cooler heads. In other words, situations happen, like happened last week, where they launched a missile into Poland and everybody had their finger, trembling finger on the red button, but cooler heads prevailed. In the West. Uh, I mean, Ukraine didn't have the red button, you know, because they probably would have used it, I don't know. But, I mean, cooler heads in the West prevailed, and they said, hey, you know, hey, let's step back from this just for a minute. Let's analyze this, and that's what the invoking of Article 4 was. They're stepping back and wanting to analyze what just happened. And in their analysis, they realized that, hey, this is not a situation where we're ready to blow up the world. Because attacking Russia, and then it escalates, and Russia attacks back, and then you got World War III. That's the first step toward blowing up the world. And the next step is when tactical nukes are used, then you take one step closer to total annihilation. But all that can happen in a matter of minutes. And then response, tactical nuclear response comes back, 
And then the next thing you know, you go to a strategic nuclear response. And that can all happen in a matter of minutes or hours in today's world. Because they all want to get a jump on the other guy. Because it's something called a first strike advantage. Binga banga boomba, the next thing you know, everybody out there is like my show yesterday. Everybody out there sitting in the dark, wondering what in the hell happened. A few nukes have went off. Places probably were not where you're at. You just don't know about it because you can't hear them from a distance. You can't hear them or nothing. You don't see nothing. It's just you're sitting there and everything goes down. The internet goes down and all your computer tech goes down. Everything goes down. It ain't coming back on. Your power's never coming back. Your gas station's never going to provide you with fuel again. So what good is your generator going to be? Unless you got solar. And then everybody's going to be wanting to steal that because they're all wanting to want to know what the news is and how can they get the news unless they got something to charge charge up their equipment to get on there. And the only news is going to be from a, a network of ham operators and things like that. Now up in space, they got a space network, but they ain't going to share that with you. They're all they're plugged into the internet, right? Down here on on where we live, down here, we're going to be stuck with ham operators and stuff, and they're going to be trying to scavenge information and send it to the other ham operators and try to figure out what just happened. And it might take weeks before you find out anything. Months. You got enough food to last you? You better, or you're going to be one thin guy and you'll be begging for a grain of rice. You'll be begging for a loaf of bread or whatever if you haven't got some. Now's the time to prepare for that. I mean, because it, there is a strong possibility that we might not get to that next level of higher advancement in society or get over that hurdle to become productive again. We might fall short of that and we might just all... we. Hotheads might prevail in the system next time. And it might happen around that Zaporizhia power plant. You know, over there in Ukraine that I talked about. All it takes is one errant missile or something over there in Ukraine and hits the spilt fuel rods or whatever. And the next thing you know, they got a leak at the Zaporizhia power plant. And then the next step would be that they have to move... Uh, NATO personnel in to stop the leak or whatever. And then and the Russians are right there. And the next thing you know, they get broiled in a firefight. And the next thing you know, that expands. Boom, boom, boom. One thing leads to another. Over that nuclear power plant. Fighting over that nuclear power plant. We're so close to that happening. And all of you guys out here, you're like complacent. You're like sitting around talking, oh, well, yeah, there's a war in Ukraine, yeah, there's nuclear weapons, yeah, 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 we have world leaders who are sitting on the button, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, but th that'll never happen. <laughs> Better rethink your strategy, because it could happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm just saying it could. And what's the odds? Well, it could be as high as 50-50. So, I mean, we might not see it happen, ever. Or it could happen. But are you willing to bet on that, that, that it's not going to happen and say, okay, I'm not going to have any food in the pantry. I'm not going to have anything put away for myself. I'm just going to drift on through this thing. Or are you going to put some food away from yourself just in case? I, I prefer to put some away it's just in case. You know, if you've got a little bit extra income that you can use to buy food, do it. Now's the time. Anyway, listen, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.